Kindly be seated. God is good all the time, and that is His nature. Good afternoon and hearty welcome, Apostolic Nuncio, Most Reverend Bishops, Reverend Superiors, Dignitaries, Brothers and Sisters in Christ. It gives me immense pleasure to address you all on the auspicious occasion of Silver Jubilee of St. Charles Ravanga Major Seminary. Jubilee is the time for us to thank, praise and glorify the mighty hand of God in establishing this seminary in the land of the brave, Namibia. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Matthew 6. 21. In the Second Vatican Council's greatest document on priestly formation, Optatum Tosis, paragraph number described, seminary as the heart of the diocese. The fathers of this holy synod have pursued the work begun by the Council of Trend, while they confidently entrust to the seminary, administrators and teachers the task of forming the future priests of Christ in the spirit of renewal promoted by the sacred synod. They earnestly exhort those who are preparing for the priestly ministry to realize that the hope of the church and the salvation of the souls is being committed to them. They urge them also to receive the norms of this decree willingly and thus to bring forth most abundant fruit which will always remain. St. Charles Lavanga Seminary was opened by the Archbishop Bonifatius Hausiku ICP for the first time as an Archdiocesan Seminary of Winduk on 28 January 1997. The Namibian Catholic Bishops Conference, NCBC, in its extraordinary plenary session held in August 1997, decided to raise the Archdiocese Seminary of St. Charles Lavanga as an interdiocesan seminary. In June 1998, the Congregation for Evangelization of Peoples, Rome, approved St. Charles Lavanga as an interdiocesan seminary and entrusted administration to the Congregation of Carmelites of Mary Immaculate CMI, an indigenous congregation of Indian origin founded by Father Thomas Palakil, Father Thomas Porukara, St. Kuriakos Elias Chavara, and Brother Jacob Kanyantra in 1831. The certifications offered at the seminary were first accredited by the Namibian Qualifications Authority NQA on November 18, 2010, which marked a milestone in the history of the seminary. The seminary was reaccredited in 2014 and again in March 2018 and in September 2021 for three years. Furthermore, all the certificates offered at the seminary were registered on the National Qualifications Framework on July 24, 2014. The seminary also registered as a private institution of higher studies, PIHE, at the National Council for Higher Education, NCHE, under the Ministry of Higher Education, Training and Innovation of the Namibian Government. At present, the seminary is authorized to award Diploma in Philosophy, Bachelor's Degree in Philosophy, Diploma in Theology, and Bachelor's Degree in Theology. Also, we are in the process of starting courses that could be offered as part-time or as distant learning courses. Looking forward, the benefits for which for the church in Namibia is standing. On the path of development, and growth, St. Charles has to flourish in the soil of this country
to give flesh to the word of God by the sons and daughters. The custom of the seminary is to have an academic theme on each academic year. This being the Jubilee year, we have decided to have the theme which we had chosen 25 years ago, united in the world to shepherd, as also depicted in the logo that side. The theme chosen is to revisit and revitalize the young minds in the power of the Word of God and to have the strong foundation in the faith and mission. As in Instrumentum Laboris, the document titled The Word of God in the Life and the Mission of the Church speaks, when the Holy Spirit begins his activity in the life of the people, one of the first and foremost compelling signs of his presence is a love for the Word of God in the scriptures and a desire to know it more. This is so because the word of scripture is a word personally addressed by God like a letter to each one in the concrete circumstances of life. The communication has an extraordinary immediateness and the power of penetrating to the core of the human being. In fact, the church is born from the word of God and lives by it. The word of God sustains the church throughout her history. The word of God permeates and animates through the power of the Holy Spirit the entire life of the church. Let's all pray that the staff and the students of this seminary be filled with all spiritual blessings to have the strong foundation of the word of God, especially this year of Jubilee. The Jubilee celebrations would not be accomplished without the grateful remembrance of many who have toiled for the foundation, daily administration, spiritual and physical formation for brothers. I begin. First and foremost, our hearts are raised to give thanks to the late Archbishop Bonifatius Hausiku ICP of the Archdiocese of Winduk for his patronage and the foundation of the seminary. In response to the invitation of Archbishop Bonifatius, Carmelites of Mary Immaculate Congregation cordially assisted in the formation for the priests and religious since 25 years. The succeeding bishops also considered the seminary as the apple of their eyes. They took keen interest in the progress of this seminary. Our former bishops, late Antoni Kiminello, OISFS, Bishop Emeritus Philip Pulitzer, OMI, Bishop Emeritus Joseph Shikongo, edified the seminary by their prayerful and exemplary, exemplary lives. The present bishops, His Grace Liborius Nashenda, Archbishop of Winduk, Bishop William Christian OSFS of Kitimansu, Reverend Father Lim, Linus Genemesho OMI of Vigariate of Rundu are shepherding the seminary very well. With grateful heart, I remember all these bishops for their remarkable service to the seminary. The former rectors, Reverend Father Nicholas Mokatu, Reverend Father Thomas Maninel CMI, Reverend Father Benny Carivelle, CMI, and the former staff developed the seminary by their hard work and the commitment in forming the future priests. Our gratitude is warmly recorded and conveyed to them physically and over the phone. In a special way, I acknowledge the committed works of Reverend Dr. Herman Agildas Beris, CMM, we are very grateful to the Pontifical Society of St. Peter, the Apostle, and all the benefactors for their continued financial support. I'm sure the interceding presence of the departed souls of Archbishop Bonifatius Hausiku, Father Thomas Manikim CMI, 
and Father Edmund Michael Oyamai would shower the blessings from the heavenly paradise. The alma mater remembers all her alumni with grateful heart. The strength, spread, and whiteness of any institution is in the alumni. We are blessed to have 150, 25 completed their studies in this institution. They are the ambassadors of this St. Charles Lavanga Major Seminary. They do promote vocations and bring younger ones to this seminary. We also remember late Father Benjamin Shilongo and late Brother Innocent Kinda OSFS. And I am sure they too would intercede for us all. With all these words of gratitude, let me welcome you all into the Silver Jubilee celebration and the academic inauguration of 2023 of the St. Charles Lavanga Major Seminary. We are really blessed and honored by the presence of Your Excellency Archbishop Peter Wells, Apostolic Nuncio. Your Excellency, you are a man of spirit and your dynamism enriches all in getting connected with you. We cherish your gracious, positive presence throughout your stay with us in NCBC, and especially with your presence with us in the last seven inaugural masses we had. Though you have numerous engagements, you kindly and generously agreed to be with us today to preside over the Jubilee Eucharistic celebration and to officially inaugurate our academic year 2023. With my heartfelt gratitude for your being, for your spirit, and for your dynamic leadership, and in the name of all gathered here, I extend you a warm and cordial welcome. It is always a joy to have our beloved Archbishop, Your Grace Liborius Nashinda, with us. He has a big heart full of love and care for the seminarians. Your Grace, in the name of all gathered here, I wholeheartedly welcome you to this celebration. Now I take the opportunity to welcome Your Excellency William Christian, Bishop of Kitmansu, and in the in charge of the seminary, Your Excellency. I admire your loving concern and care for on the formation of the seminarians. In the name of all gathered here, I extend you a warm welcome. We have the President of South African Bishops' Conference and the Bishop of Umtata, His Excellency Sitambele Sipuka, with us. Your Excellency, I appreciate and thank you for coming all the way from South Africa, showing your magnanimity, and I record our gratitude and cordial welcome to you. His Excellency Stanislaus Dusiba, Bishop of Dice of Umsingulu, is very much connected with the seminary as his students study here. I appreciate you for your trust in us, the formators. Your paternal presence motivates us to become committed and sincere. Your Excellency, I welcome you wholeheartedly to this Jubilee celebration. È sempre una gioia avere con noi il nostro amato Vescovo, Sua Eccellenza Don Pio Hipunati del Ongiva di Eccesi. Ha sempre un cuore pieno di amore e di cura per i seminaristi. Sua Eccellenza, a nome di tutti qui riuniti, vi do il benvenuto a questa celebrazione con tutto il cuore. Now I welcome very Reverend Father Linus, the Apostolic Administrator of the Vicariate of Rundu. Dear Father, I acknowledge your contributions for the formation of our seminarians. 
In the name of all, I welcome you to this August function. I also cordially welcome Monsignor Dario, Secretary to Apostolic Nuncio. Hearty welcome, Your Reverence. It is in the plan of God that St. George Lavanga Major Seminary is entrusted with the CMIs since 25 years, and our congregation is proud on it. As a sign of love and gratitude, the CMI Prayer General, very Reverend Father Thomas Chathambarambal CMI, a visionary and an educationist, and above all, with a paternal heart, Vicar General Reverend Father Josie Tamarasheri and Counselor for Social Work Reverend Father Biju Vadakel present here to make this occasion more graceful and blessed. We also have CMI Provincials Reverend Father Davis Panakel and James Style and Father Paul Provincial Counselor and CMI Fathers working in African continent to bless this endeavor. I acknowledge with gratitude the strenuous efforts of all CMI fathers worked and working here. I too acknowledge the hard works of Reverend Dr. Benny Karivele, CMI, present, Secret present Secretary General and the former Rector, and extend a hearty welcome to all my CMI conferers. I am extremely to have to have the gracious presence of Honorable Chief Justice Peter Shibuti, Honorable John Mutorwa, Minister of Works and Transport, Honorable Bernadette Jagar, Deputy Minister for Gender Equality, Poverty, Poverty Eradication and Social Welfare, Honorable Faustina Kale, Deputy Minister of Education, Art and Culture, Honorable Elma Dienta, MP, Deputy Chief Whip, Official Opposition of Popular Democratic Movement, Honorable Brain Black, Councilor of Windhoek East, Mr. Herman, Representative Honorable Yonov Dausuk, Minister of Justice, and other dignitaries, a cordial welcome to you all. I also extend a warm welcome to Reverend brother Herman Agildas, who has been 18 years Dean of Studies and still a teacher present with us at the age of 95. I thank his commitment and enthusiasm to come, or come for the Silver Jubilee. Hearty welcome. I extend a hearty welcome to all the provincial superiors, all the priests, deacons, and religious brothers and sisters. I also extend a cordial welcome to all the staff members, all the students, the backbone of St. Charles Seminary, and all the friends and benefactors who are present here in this church. In fine, this celebration of Silver Jubilee is to praise God for all the goodness this institution has experienced throughout these years and to recall the hard work done by all those who have been associating themselves with this institution. May St. Charles Lavanga continue to intercede for us to witness Lord Jesus till the ends of the world that this institution establishes the kingdom of God which we pray daily that thy kingdom come. Deus gracias. Now I invite Apostolic Nuncio to preside over the Eucharist.
First reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Since their shame was double, and disgrace and spittle were their portion, they shall have a double inheritance in their land. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love what is right. I hate robbery and injustice. I will give them their recompense faithfully. A lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. Like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and the garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. His right hand is exalted.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Love the life of God as the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will be remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandment and remain in his love. I have told you this is so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be completed. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has created love that this to lie down me one's life for one's friends. You are my friend if you do what I command you. I not longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you my friend because I have taught you everything I have heard from my father. It is was not you whom close chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain. So that whatever you ask the father in my name, he will may give you. This is your love one another. The Gospel of the Living Gods. Good afternoon, everyone. There is no greater love than to give up your life for your friends. I think we should repeat that. There is no greater love than to give up your life for your friends. That should be our opening prayer every morning. It should be our prayer every afternoon. It should be our prayer every evening. First and foremost, I want to welcome everybody. You know, in Southern Africa, I always like to say that we have to go through all the protocols, all the names. No matter how good you are at it, you always leave somebody out or two people out. You always mispronounce three different names. And at the end of the day, you're not sure you did it right or not. So I always like to say, brothers and sisters in Christ, all protocols observed. There's no greater title than to be a brother and sister in Christ. So welcome, everybody. Today we are here to offer some congratulations. And I would be remiss if I didn't start out by congratulating, first of all, the Catholic community of Namibia for this milestone of 25 years of a national seminary. Secondly, I want to congratulate the students, those present today, and especially the alumni who've gone before us for now 25 years of alumni. That's no small thing. I also want to congratulate the hierarchy, 
your bishops, your leaders in the church here, who have seen this as a very important thing to have our own seminary here. And then also I would like to congratulate all those who behind the scenes have supported the work of the seminary. The Reverend Sisters, I see them here. They're always present. Always. So many lay people who've given their what they could to help keep this place going. It's expensive to keep a seminary going. And a lot of times it's just a, a few pennies here, a dollar here. That's what keeps it going. But we're so grateful for what has been given. I think we should reflect on 25 years because 20, 25 years is a real milestone today. I don't think we may have said that 25 years ago. But today, very few things make it to 25 years. Look at how many things fail after seven or eight years. Look at how many marriages fail. Few marriages make it 25 years anymore. Look at how sometimes vocations fail. They don't make it to 25 years. People leave after seven or eight years. So 25 years is really a milestone. It is an important moment. I would also say that it's an important moment for this institution because few institutions in this area enjoy the reputation of this seminary. This seminary enjoys a great reputation. It is respected throughout the region, and I know that the work of the Archdiocese and the Church in Windhoek and its sponsorship, and especially of the CMI brothers and their years of commitment to making sure that this is a strong seminary, not only academically, but formationally. It is very good formationally, and that is a wonderful thing. I think we also need to especially remember Archbishop Haushiku who had the foresight and the tenacity to see this project through to its completion. He's no doubt today looking down on us in satisfaction, great satisfaction. Today we heard the motto, which our rector shared with us, and we also heard it in the psalm today. And the motto is this, the Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. His right hand is exalted, for a grain of mustard seed has grown up to be a great tree. Now there's one thing about this phrase that has always struck me, and I found a bit odd, in fact, actually. I always find it a, bit, a little bit odd as to why it is only his right hand. What about the left hand? I mean, our Lord's not an amputee. He has two hands. So why doesn't it just say, the hands of the Lord have done my deeds, and the hands of the Lord are exalted? And I think it's probably for this reason, because the right hand is a metaphor. It is a metaphor for us, for the church. We are the right hand. We are the hand that has done mighty deeds in his name, following his will and following his word. We are his hand that is exalted. When I thought of today's celebration, I also thought of another phrase. This is a classic phrase. Those of us who are older will remember this. And even those who are even older, I'm not going to say who they are, will remember it even better. But it was a phrase, actually, that was uh, often used in the uh, coronation rites of kings and queens. And in fact, if you go to their tombs, even today, and look at the number of tombs of kings and queens, you will see this phrase in Latin emblazoned on their tombs. And the phrase is this, non nobis domine, non nobis, sed nomini tuo da gloriam. In other words, not unto us, O Lord, the glory, but to thy name give the glory. It's beautiful. Not to us, not to the things we've done, but to your name is the glory given. I think these are fitting words for the celebration we have today. They should also be the motto, I think, of every priest and bishop. We hear a lot today about the problem with clericalism, and it is a problem. However, 
I think if you really look at clericalism at its core, there's a much deeper problem. It's because we don't say this, pra this praise, this prayer, not unto us, O oh Lord, not unto us, but to your glory. It's about pride. It's about ego. It's about hubris. Anytime a priest or a bishop or a deacon is proud about what he does, is proud about his accomplishments, it becomes a problem. Because at the end of the day, brothers, it's not about us. It's about him. It's about giving thanks to him. And it's about always praising him. Therefore, you will excuse me, I say, in the, excuse me, please, lay people. Today on this special celebration, I have kind of directed my homily, especially to the priests and to the seminarians, because I don't get a chance to speak to them oftentimes just about what we share and the things that we should, I think, should be concerned about. So today I'm going to speak a little bit about what I think are three moments where our ministry can be confused. Three moments in our lives as priests or religious when we can get caught up and make it all about us and not about God. The first one is prayer. Now that's a strange thing. Why would you think that prayer, how in the heck, this moonsill is nuts. <laughs> Why would he say prayer is something that can be all about us? Well, I think it can be. And I think we have to be careful about it, especially as ministers of the word. It's so easy for us to get caught up in our own problems, in our own sufferings, in our own toils, that we make our prayer all about us. Oh, please, please get rid of my bishop, please. Oh, please send this nuncio away, please. It's very easy for us to do that. We tend to reflect on the things that we want, petitions for ourselves. As a priest, really, we should only have three aspects to our prayer. We should pray that famous prayer of the poor man in the back of the temple saying, have mercy on me, Lord, for I am a sinner. Have mercy on me, for I am a sinner. Brothers, and we know very well our sins. We know all about it. And because we know we've been forgiven, we are so grateful. Grateful for the fact that we have been given for our sinfulness. Sometimes I'm convinced that because we are so defective, that is why we were called to be priests. He knew that we were weak, and so he called the weak to make them strong in Jesus Christ our Lord. The second, thanksgiving prayer. I think our prayer should often be about thanksgiving, thanking God for what we have been given because we have been so blessed. Thanking God for the blessings we've been given personally, but also our communities, our support systems. None of us could make it without a great support system. We all have people who love us and who hold us up all the time. I always think about the story of Moses when they're fighting the war. And he has to call in his two trusted commands to hold up his arms because he's weak. That's what priests need. We're called to pray, but at times we need two people to come in or more to hold our arms up so we can continue to fight the fight. We need to pray in a special way in thanksgiving for those who challenge us. We all have people in our lives that we wish would just go away. <laughs> we all know we have people in the, who write right, every day the same email comes. Oh no, not again. We all have people who we see them coming and it's like, oh, oh. you try to play like you're busy talking to someone else. <laughs> we all know that. These are people we need to pray for. These people challenge us and we need to pray a prayer of thanksgiving for them. We need to pray for those who criticize us because we need to hear the criticism. Sometimes it's not just, but we need to hear it all the same. It reminds us of who we are and what we're about. And the third type of prayer I think a priest needs to pray is that we need to make sure that at least 50% of our prayers is for other people. It needs to be for other people, people who we know need our prayers. I always like to say there is no worse thing in the world for a person to do 
than to tell somebody, oh, I'll pray for you, and then never pray for them. How ugly. Why would you say you're going to pray for somebody and then not pray for them? It's terrible. Don't get caught in that trap. If you say you're going to pray for somebody, make sure that you, you pray for them. Every day I think it's good to make a little list, even if it's in your mind. These are the people I will pray for today. I like to write it out in the morning sometimes because I have a short memory, so that keeps me from forgetting it. So these are the ones I'm going to pray for today. I used to know a priest who used to have a list about as long as this entire sanctuary of all the people he prayed for. He was always dropping it out of his breviary. But he was praying for these people all the time. I said that there was a second point <clears throat> also that we need to be careful about as priests, about not getting caught up in. And I think the second point is this, is the liturgy. It's very interesting today if you read the blogs, if you look around, everyone's talking about liturgical wars in the church. It doesn't matter if it's the Roman rite or if it's the Eastern rite. There's liturgical wars going on. Well, let me just tell you something. The Mass is not ours. The Mass is not mine. The Mass is not Father's. The Mass, mass is, not Father Vill, is not Bishop Willem's. The Mass is the Mass of Jesus Christ. And it's about one thing, Jesus. I worry when I see priests who think that the Mass is about them. That they must be the center of attention. Look at me. Look at me. I mean, we hear sometimes these garbled homilies that just go on and on and on. You think, what in the world? And they talk more about themselves than they talk about God. Or then they start singing. What is this singing stuff all about? Just give the homily. <laughs> if, you want to go on, if you want to go on Namibian Idol, try out. <laughs> but there's no need for it. We need to give people the word of God. I think sometimes there's also a problem whenever we get caught up in the particulars about the liturgy. Because I'm very convinced that what people actually desire is simple. They want a reverent, holy, and faithful liturgy. That's it. Reverent, holy, and faithful. Often today when we hear about these liturgical wars, whether it be during the Mass in Latin, or only in the vernacular, or facing the people, or the back to the people, even when we get caught up in these, I think that what we are doing is that we are making it about ourselves. These are clerical wars. Very few of our lay people are worried about this. Some, but not a lot. Once again, what they want is just a holy Mass. The majority of our people, I don't think they care. They want a good homily. They want a good priest. And they want him to present a beautiful liturgy. The ones who are caring about the wars, I think, are the ones who have too much time on their hands. They need to think about other things. It is a bit like the ancient, we always heard about the ancient academics. They used to have the discussion about how many angels could fit on a pinhead. And they would get in arguments about angels on a pinhead. I must ask the question, maybe we're talking a little bit about angels on pinheads at times. And I think it matters very little to most. The third point, priests must look at their actions. Always look at your actions. And what are your intentions? Am I doing this because it's going to give me attention? Or am I doing this because it really needs to be done? Am I doing this is because this is what people need right now? This is what they're calling for. Remember, the reason we work is always in order to help others. It's not because we want to, everyone to say, Oh, look how good and talented Father is. Oh, look how committed he is. That's not our reason. Our reason is for others. I think it's so appropriate that the seminary that we celebrate this evening is named after Charles Luanga, the Ugandan martyr. His life was never about him. It was about others. It was about caring for them, protecting them, so that they would never be abused or violated. He had one point of reference in his life, Jesus Christ. 
and Jesus Christ's love for others. And because of that love for others, he felt he had to give his life in protection for those he loved, in protection for those he had promised to protect. Finally, I want to leave you with this thought. Often we hear that priests need to be well-trained professionals, and that is why we have seminaries. I agree, professionalism is very important, but is not the final goal. Priests need to be well-prepared ministers because our ministry is a vocation. It's not a profession. It's not a job. It is not nine to five. It is not five days a week. It's not eight hours a day. It is, in fact, every day, every hour, every minute, every second because it is a relationship of love. And a relationship of love is not something that's just nine to five. Any more than a marriage is just nine to five. The priesthood is not just nine to five. It is a reality which has one point of reference, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who is our way, who is our truth, and who is our life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, grant wisdom, love, and understanding to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, all the bishops, especially those present here today, all the priests, religious brothers, sisters, and all consecrated men and women that in their ways of life they may live as true witnesses of your holy gospel and draw more people to you. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious. hear us. We pray for all the professors and lecturers who dedicated, who dedicate their whole time and energy to form young men who feel deeply called in their hearts to serve God in their brothers and sisters. Give them all wisdom and necessary graces and blessings as they commence with the new academic year. Lord, hear us. Prayer for the sick. Good Lord, we want to pray for our fellow sick brothers and sisters. When they feel one window of hope is closed, open for them the other window of consolation to be able to see better. When they feel one door of healing is closed, open for them the other door of compassion. When they feel that it is taking too long to get better, open for them the door of hope in you. Give us the grace to be close to them, to give consolation, our loving presence, and words of encouragement. Lord, hear us.
God has given to us as spiritual food, the saving sacrament of your Son, which we have offered you in thanksgiving, grant that being strengthened by gifts of courage and joy, we may serve you more devotedly and be worthy of still further blessings. Through Christ our Lord. After the final blessings, all are invited to the cathedral hall for the reception and for the celebration. Glorify the Lord by your life.